Another helpful uh, piece of knowledge to, to have in your head when you're looking at prints in particular is to think about how the, the, the foot of an animal's evolved. So the theory being um, that we've all, or all mammals, have descended from a, a shrew-like animal that had five toes. So if we look at our, our own hand, we still number um, animal toes in exactly the same way. So starting from the inside, the thumb, or the equivalent of the thumb, is number one, and then we go two, three, four, five. Now with some animals, um, if you think about your cat and dog, this, this doesn't show in the track anymore. So what's happened is number one has gone, or in the case of a dog, it's actually gone up further on the front leg and becomes the dew claw. It's disappeared on the hind leg. So they have essentially five toes on the front feet and four on the back. Uh, this toe and this toe have come back down and they form the pads that are behind. And then these guys are the ones in the front. So we've got that kind of evolution of, of, of the foot going on. The ungulates, and I could probably show you this better with this deer foot, this is a, um, a roe deer foot. Essentially what's happened is that the, the toe, which is the equivalent of our, the ball of our finger, and we, has modified to the point that what is essentially our nail has grown out into this huge sort of hoof, or claw if you like. I mean other animals have claws in, in the place of their fingernails, and it's now effectively walking on the edge of this this modified nail, which is why we call them nail walkers. So we've got toes um, three and four here, and then these other two become dew claws, and they've gone way up the track. And they don't really show unless the animal's really moving fast, or there's very deep mud, and they can dig down and make an impression. Many animals are like us, in fact. If you think about the way that you walk, we walk in a very plantigrade way, in that we, the whole of our soul will, will make contact with the ground. And so will badgers, and so will lots of the other mustelids, the weasels, and, uh, and lots of rodents, and what are called lagomorphs, which are rabbits and hares. So you can see with this guy, this is a, a mountain hare foot, that the whole of that surface will make contact with the ground. And so will this. And what we have on this, um, this particular foot, this is the front foot, we have five toes on that, but the fifth one, or the thumb, is way back here and only seldom shows in the track. So if we look at the bottom of this, unlike your dog or your cat at home, there are no toe pads showing, they're all covered in these very stiff hairs, so you never see pads in a rabbit or a hare track. And the fact that you're not seeing pads can help you identify the animal itself. So rodents, um, and this is a squirrel, which is a rodent, have five toes on their back um, feet and four shown on their front. And if you can see both, both tracks, all rodents have these three front toes all in a row, and then somewhere either side you'll find the other two toes. The front track, this one here, is, is different. They're, they've got the four here that are displayed in a little more, more of an arc, and that just scales down depending on the, uh, on the size of the rodent that we're looking at. So if we have a look at this wood mouse, you can see it's still got those classic three in a row, and then there's a toe there and a toe there, giving you the five that it's got. You see, it can be a little bit harder to tell if you've only got a front track. All animals move with a certain gait, whether that might be a walk, it might be a run, it might be a trot, a gallop, a bound. There's all sorts of variations, and those gaits relate to certain trap patterns that you find on the ground often. And if you can compare the water vole here, we can see we've got this very distinctive zigzaggy pattern compared with the brown rat here which is a much more of a of a bouncy spaced out sort of pattern and sometimes if you've got a good trail that can be very diagnostic as to which rodent you're looking at so what we've got here is a, uh, a deer trail roe deer trail and if we come down and have a closer look it looks uh, a little bit confusing at first we seem to have a, a cleat here this is one of these extended toes we talked about. And then you see the same thing happening again. Um, and that's because as this animal walks, if you imagine its front leg has to lift up and its hind leg has to land somewhere in relation to that. So what we can see here is we can see this line here, which is one of the toes. This is the other toe. This is the hind track that's partially obliterated the front track. What we can also see while we're looking at this, um, and one of the classic things that make it a road track, is this very heart-shaped profile. The other deer that we find here, Muntjac, although being much smaller, at this time of year there's a huge crossover. We've got baby row. They're much, much more parallel than this. And even the baby row have this distinct heart shape to, the, to their feet. If you imagine as the deer's rear right leg 
lifts off from the ground, just before it touches down, the right front goes forward, and so this hind leg will land somewhere in relation to the front track. And it could be slightly outside, could be slightly inside, could be directly on top. If it's behind, it's quite likely to be a slower walk. If it's ahead, it's quite likely to be a, a faster walk. Had it been walking, you'd expect this straddle to be slightly wider and you'd expect that track to be further back and over here somewhere, probably about there, with another one about there. And here we can see that the straddle is much wider and the stride is much shorter, which indicates the animal's walking. Um, if we take the distance of that stride and we classify that stride by the point where we find one track, so we've got a right hind track here, to the point where we see it again. So effectively a stride really encompasses three marks. And then we pull our hands up, that will give us the rough distance between the hips and the shoulders. It's, um, it's something that was um, brought to our attention by uh, an American tracker called James Halfpenny. Um, so here it's very, very obvious because we can see the fr footprints, we can identify the species, but oftentimes you just get a smudge on the ground, you get a little indication that it's a deer, but you don't get enough to identify it species-wise. So sometimes the size comparison can really help. So uh, sometimes the way the animal is moving can really confuse you. Um, this track here has got loads, loads more energy in than the ones we've seen before because the, the animal is clearly moving fast. And what happens, particularly with the front feet uh, on deer, is they splay quite a lot. And they can look hugely different um, to what you'd expect. And if you, if you see the size of this track, or what you think initially is the size of this track, it looks like a much, much bigger animal because of the energy involved in going in and effectively bounding off through the woods. Um, the important thing when you're looking at big tracks like this, and this is true if it's in soft substrate as well, like mud and snow, is to look right into the base of the track to get a, a, a true indication of the size of it. So in the same um, area, we've got a different type of, of, of foot here. We've got a plantar grade foot. So if we come in closer, you can see the uh, individual toes. This is quite an old track. Oftentimes you will see claws as well shown with a badger, but I'm not seeing any on this one. Um, often, again, what we don't see in the track, what we call the negative space, which is this ridge here where there are no toes, and it's in a gentle curve, suggesting all the toes are ahead of the palm pad. Again, you know, can't really be a dog track or a fox track. So what we've got here is a fairly, fairly classic um, dog track. And again, if we do this comparison with our own hand, what we can see has happened is that the inside toe, or the equivalent of our thumb, number one, has gone. It's up the leg, or if it's a hind track, it's disappeared altogether. Toe number two becomes this toe. Toe number three becomes this toe. Toe number four becomes this toe. Toe number five becomes this one. So effectively, those two have gone back and those two are forward. And then we have this big pad at the back, which again is our uh, interdigital pad. So looking at the negative space on a dog track, it's very much this sort of pattern, which you can see pushed up in the mud here. And we have got the imprint of some claws here as well.